appreciate that great and mighty Father this morning. Oh, Zemarush if you can pray in the language of the Spirit this morning, for the next two minutes, We are here, Jesus. We are here to draw from you, the great and mighty Father. Oh, we surrender to you this morning. 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 Oh, transform us today. Purify our hearts this morning. Oh, give strength to our body this morning. Give directions to our spirit this morning. Illuminate our minds this morning. Oh, shaka berus ke beranaba. Rus ka barunaba shaka baranere. Don't be left out this morning. Oh, the spirit of the Lord is here this morning. Oh, we worship your father. We've come to draw from you. We've come to draw.
Hallelujah. Clap your hands for Jesus this morning. If you are excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning, can you clap your hands for Jesus? Hallelujah. As you take your seat, can you welcome at least three people here that you are welcome in Jesus' name? Hallelujah. We can shake hands now. No more Corona. Amen. Are we excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Can I hear you shout? <laughs> Hallelujah. So we have some special people in our midst this morning. If today is your first time of worshiping with us, on a Sunday morning like this, today is your first time in Potter's Place Parish, can we see your hand? You are worshiping with us for the first time today. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you, can you rise on your feet, please, as we welcome you? Can you stand up, please? Today is your first time. Choir, let's welcome them. Hallelujah. To the house of God. To the house of prayer. Church, are we excited to have them? Yeah. Hallelujah. So if you are excited, can we stretch our hands to them that the Lord will bless them in the name of Jesus. That the Lord will grant their heart desires this morning in the name of Jesus. That they will return to this assembly to give testimony of the Lord's goodness in their lives in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Amen. You can have your seat. Please fill the forms that have been given to you. Then up towards the end of the service, we'll call you out for a royal reception. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's clap our hands for Jesus one more time. And let's appreciate the choir. Hallelujah. I'm excited this morning, and Jesus is my joy. Hallelujah. The Bible says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Amen. If you are here this morning, you are not happy or something is making you sad, the joy of the Lord will come upon you today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, when people are sad and, um, or when people are not happy, I've seen some people they say, oh, the reason I didn't go to church is uh, I don't just feel like it's everything around me is not working, I'm not happy. When you are not happy or you are sad, that's the main reason you have to go to the church of the Lord. Hallelujah. You have to go to the house. The Bible says, I'm glad when they say unto me, let us what? Go into the house of the Lord. So you, you, you whatever you are, you know, trusting God for, when you come into the house of the Lord, the Lord will meet your needs. I pray all your needs shall be met this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bibles to Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua 1 8. It's a popular scripture. Hallelujah. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. 
This morning, we are looking at the topic, abiding in the word. And the word there is the word of God, abiding in the word. Abide means to accept or to act in accordance, in accordance, to act in accordance. And that also means to comply with, to obey, to observe, to follow. To abide means to comply, to obey, to observe. How do we, how can we abide in the word of the Lord? And we have gotten the instruction this morning, Joshua 1, 8 says, the, this book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate on it, what? Day and night. You shall meditate on it day and night. That means the word of the Lord should always be in our mouth. We have seen the attributes of God, the name of God, what the name of the Lord can do. And if we look at Psalm 138 verse 2, Psalm 138 verse 2, if you can have it on the screen, Psalm 138 verse 2. I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above, above all your name. Another version says you have magnified your word and your name above every other thing. You have magnified your word and your name above every other thing. Everything here on earth bows to the word of God. The Lord has given us the manual to live a supernatural life as believers. And this is the manual. Praise the Lord. For you to be successful as a Christian, you need this word. It is what you do consistently that brings transformation. It's not what you do once in a while. The word of the Lord is not for us to open only on Sundays. If I'm, I'm telling us the secrets of a supernatural life this morning. The Lord was giving Joshua that instruction. said, and you will have good success you sh for, for you to be successful. In this journey, you need to meditate on the word day and night. Praise the Lord. And if we see Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Second Timothy 2, 15. The Bible says, be diligent to present yourself approved to God. I'm giving us a background this morning. We are going somewhere. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of, of truth. That means as a believer, you should be able to rightly divide the word of God. Let me read it from another version here. Hallelujah. NIV. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, who correctly undoes the word of truth. Who correct? That means if you don't understand the scripture, you can misundo or you can use the word of God wrongly. Who correctly undoes the word of truth. I heard from a minister, and I believe it's, 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 a, it's a true story. This lady had an attack in the dream, and um, she, in, the, in that dream, she was casting and binding that, that demon. I bind you in the name of the Lord, and you know, maybe she should have stayed on that, and the demon was, and immediately from the story, the, the, the lady said, because it is written. And we were told in that story that the demon waited and said, ah. And 
it is written. Everything just disappeared in our head. It is written, and the demon was waiting to hear what was written. It is written, I was waiting to hear what was written, and she couldn't say anything. Rightly dividing the word of truth. This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. How can you rightly divide the word? We've mentioned it here several times, Bible study. For those that doesn't come on Tuesday, we've had a series on how to effectively study the word of God. How to rightly divide the word of God. To rightly divide the word of God, if you want to study the scripture, there are three main points you need to you know, consider. Number one is observation. Number two, interpretation. And number three, application. If you want to rightly divide the word of God, to be skillful in handling the word of the Lord. You need three things. You need to consider observation, interpretation, and application. And, and I will explain quickly. If you open a Bible passage or a scripture, after you have decided to maybe, okay, I want to do a topical approach. I want to, let me pick a topic. Or I, w- I want to read from Genesis to Revelation. Or, you know, sometimes what I do is I hear, Maybe in Sunday school, something was mentioned and there was no clear explanation. I will have to go back. I will write it down. I need to do a further study on this. Hallelujah. Oh, Elijah, this, Elijah, I need to do, and that's how I do some of my, most of my Bible studies. I pick, there's nothing we should say in the scripture that, oh, this aspect, we should not talk about it. Oh, when they say, do not do this in the church of God, don't cover your head, don't this, 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 and you know, there is nothing we should say, oh, this area, don't, the answer is in the scripture, I love those kind of topics, and you know, those kind of uh, areas, I want to go and study and see what the scripture, compare scriptures and all that, so I said observation, you need to observe, What's what's, what's this passage, talking about. So in observations, we have some questions you need to ask when you observe. This is not where we are going this morning, but we need to understand these things. In observations, you need to ask the question, who? Who is this passage talking to? What? Where? When? Why? Wherefore? Why did the Bible say this? Why? That's how you, you know, begin to get understanding of the scripture. Even when you know, the Bible says, contend earnestly for the truth. When someone is talking down on your faith and because you don't know what to say, that's why we don't talk sometimes. But if you know how to rightly, correctly handle the scripture, you will answer them. Praise the Lord. Are we together this morning? Observation. Who, what, where, when, where, wherefore. If you need more of that, start coming for digging deep. Amen interpretation. That's the next thing to, you know, effectively study the scripture, to know how to rightly divide the word of truth. In interpretation, you have already listed, oh, who this thing was addressed to, when, where, and all that. Interpretation, what are the things to consider in interpretation? The content. We have what we call the content. The context. And you've heard us mentioning that almost all the time here. There is a context. You don't just pick a particular verse of a, of a scripture and you say, oh, that's what I will be riding on. This, this is the plan. No, you need to read what was before that particular verse and, you know, what is under it. So there is a content and there is a context. Then you need to compare, comparison. And um, sometimes some of the things in the scripture some of the things that were said is because of the culture of that time. So we have content, we have contest, we have comparison, we have culture, and we have uh, consultation. Sometimes you need to consult Bible commentary, and, and we have hundreds of Bible commentaries uh, on the internet. You don't need to buy, and if you want to buy also. So you need to consider Content, contest, comparison, culture, and consultation. And the last aspect to how to 
correctly handle the, the, the scripture is application. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Application. And I will say this. Every Bible passage, scripture, a verse in the scripture, does not have a private interpretation. The writer, what, you know, the Bible says, all scripture is, you know, being inspired by God. The word, this is the word of God. Do we agree? The intent, the reason why the word was written is for a purpose. So there is no, it's, it has just that meaning. Praise the Lord. But you can apply the scripture to millions of situations. The scripture does not have a private interpretation, if you get what I'm saying this morning. Like the Bible says, for God so loved the world. God is saying, for God so loved the world. There is no other interpretation you want to give it. But you can apply it. Application is very key. And you need to understand that's why application is the last process in, you know, how to correctly handle the, the Bible. We have observation, we have interpretation, then application. When you understand, you have observed, you have seen the interpretation, then application. For God so loved the world, I can apply it. Lord, because you love me, I will not fail this exam. You can, inter you, you can apply. It's one interpretation, but you can apply. God, because you love me. No, I must get to, I must get that contract. Hallelujah. Because for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. Because God, you love me. This particular exam, I will pass it. This this particular application will be successful. Do, we, do you get what we are saying this morning? You can apply a particular scripture. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. I can do all things. That's the interpret. I can do all things through Christ. But I can apply that particular scripture to several things. I can do all things. I will, by the grace of God, because I can do all things, I'm, I'm, I'm getting that new job this year. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you are sick, you can apply that. Lord, you are my strength because I can do so. I'm, I, I, I'm rising from this sickness. Hallelujah. In uh, application. The word of God, abiding in the word. It is when you understand the scripture, you understand what the Bible is saying, that is when you can actually apply the word of God. Now, we have what we call the logos and the rhema. This is the logos, the written word. Amen. The word that has been written. And we have... How many thousands of promises here for us that you can claim? Then apart from that, there is a rhema. Logos is the written word. For example, the Bible. And we have rhema, the word spoken directly to you from the Father. Hallelujah. Now, you need to take logos Understand it from what we've said, observation, interpretation, application. By the time you are applying it, you can turn it into a rhema. Praise the Lord. You need to make the word of God to become personal to you. When the word of the Lord gets personal to you, it starts producing results. Anybody can quote the scriptures. I've seen people that are not born again. In Babcock University, there are Christian courses. If you are a Babcock student, 
life and teachings of Christ. This we've seen Muslim students doing more better than the Christians because they will read now. List Bible ten Bible verses about Jesus Christ, and they will cram. They will write. Praise God. So it's beyond. Let's just cram in scripture. It's application. Anybody can, you can, you know, cram the whole Old Testament and be saying it. Uh, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth and all that. And if you don't know how to apply it, you are just reading like maybe a parrot is just making noise. Hallelujah. Man shall not live by bread alone. Let's see Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. And let's see Jesus, our perfect example. Matthew 4. Then Jesus, verse 1 now, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, it is written. Hallelujah. And Jesus was able to complete it. If we check Deuteronomy chapter 8, you will see what Jesus quoted here. The Bible says, and Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but Every but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Amen. So, Jesus overcame the devil through the word. Jesus was 100% God and 100% man. So, when he was talking here, he was here on heart. So, he understood the scripture and he answered the devil. Man shall not live by bread. It is written. Verse 5, then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written. The devil also quoting scripture now. He shall give his angels charge over you and in their hands shall, you bear, shall bear you up. Lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, it is written again. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Hallelujah. Verse uh, 10. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. The word of God. So let's look at the things the word of the Lord can do for us. I saw a popular quote from, one of the, from, from a man of God. He said, many carry the Bible, but fail to understand what the Bible carries. Many carry the Bible, but fail to understand what the Bible carries. You just carry the word of God everywhere. You don't know that, you know, you are carrying a treasure. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord gives joy. And we've mentioned that. That means that uh, God is emphasizing on that this morning. I pray for someone this morning. The joy of the Lord is your strength in the name of Jesus. The word of the Lord gives joy. The Bible says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. You need to leave the realm of just observation, interpretation to start applying. What the devil does is to speak and, you know, ah, that thing that happened, you, 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 you have to be sad. You have to, this, this thing happened that, you know, you have to get yourself out. No, this is not me. Hallelujah. I think on Tuesday or Wednesday, the devil wanted to put me in that, you know, that position. I did something for someone. You know, that's why we are learning every day. You see, before you do something for someone, negotiate. Okay, after this thing. This is what you get. 60, 40. 70, 30. Sleepless night, I was working for this person. <laughs> and when the money came, it was, I, was, I was doing calculation. Oh, okay, at least. <laughs> 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 
No, it was so bad. It was not when they said, oh, yeah, give me your account number, I will transfer. It was not up to 10%. You know, I will appreciate you and I will always appreciate you. And, you know, it was selling story and, ah, huh? You know, but it's not someone, if it's a person who is their mate, I would have said, oh, but, you know, an elderly person. Anyway, Yoruba said, you know, Jelagwa. <laughs> if you don't understand that, amen. I was, because I've already, sometimes the money that you have not received, you have done calculation. <laughs> Oh, this is this one. We go this this. So when the money came, it it does it didn't make sense, and I was like, "Wow, how will I?" Too rough. It affected my work that day. So when I got home, Hallelujah. That's why you need to to marry the right person. Amen. So, <laughs> Hallelujah. So the first person I you know I told my wife this was what happened and. You I said, that's, that, is that the reason why you are, you know, like this and, you know, you are more than that. God is your supplier. Hallelujah. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And she opened my eyes to the scripture. Hallelujah. That was application. I knew all those scriptures. So hallelujah. <laughs> but I was not applying them. It was... I was observing and trying to interpret. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And God took me from that. Hallelujah. And on, on Friday, I think we had a prayer meeting here on Friday. When I got home, I, I received a call. Someone said, oh, you know, can you do this for someone? I've, I've done a recommendation. And when the, the money I received was times, okay, it should be times 10, yes. Times 10 of what? That man gave me. Hallelujah. I was like, so if I have stayed in that position, and, uh, I'm sad. I'm, you know, I even said in my mind that I will, uh, anytime I see that man, I will, do, I, will, I will dodge and, you know. And the following day, the man was at the car park as I was about to entering my car. He was there. And he was this, why is this man trying to, I don't want to see you. Praise God. But, you know, the word of the Lord came. And God was proofing to me. Sometimes it won't happen that maybe two days after you will receive thanks, thanks ten, oh, praise God, so that you don't stay somewhere and be saying, but the pastor said after two days, amen. But God will surely supply your needs in the name of Jesus. The word of the Lord gives wisdom. It teaches us what to do part time. If you check Exodus, God was giving Moses. And the Bible says, and God said to Moses, chapter 11, God said, we've, we've even examined that here before. Gives you direction, what to do per time. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord is a faith builder. The word of the Lord builds our faith. The Bible says, faith comment by hearing and hearing of the word. Hallelujah. Romans 10, 8, because of our time, you can just write the scriptures down. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. Romans 10, 17. Hebrews 13, 7. Hallelujah. Hebrews 13, 7. Romans 10, 17, the ESV version says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Hallelujah. If you want your faith to grow, you need to, you know, study the word and hear the word. Some of us, our, we have the knowledge of, if I ask you now, list all the 22 players of Liverpool. You can tell, and you will tell us, some people will tell us, ah, they bought him 26 million pounds. And he was on transfer list. He, was, he came from Sporting Lisbon. They will give accurate information. That is not bad. But are you building your faith? First thing first. Hallelujah. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. 
some of us, what we are building is, you know, we have a series. We, oh, another series is coming. Another this is coming and, and, and all that. The, the word of the Lord is a faith builder. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I've mentioned that Psalm 32 verse 8, the, the word of the Lord gives direction. The word of God gives relief, takes away burden. Matthew eleven twenty eight to 29. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to, to 29. Come to me, all who labor and heavy laden, and I will what? I will give you rest. Verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly, and I will give you what? I will give you rest. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord will make you bold. Boldness. Some people think when you talk, oh, this is what the Lord told me. This is the word of the Lord. This is the rhema that I've received. And you are bold about it. It's not that you are proud. It's because you have received the word. Hallelujah. Let's see Isaiah 41, 13. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, fear not. For what? I will help you. So, no matter what is happening around you, when people are stranded, you know the word of the Lord says what? Fear not, for I will what? I will help you. Someone is receiving the help of the Lord this morning in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Fear not. That is the word of the Lord. The word of God is yes and what? And amen. God says it. I don't, I'm trying to. The, the, the song just dropped in my spirit now. Choir, can you help me? God says. So, can you help us with the lyrics? God what? God said it. I believe it. I believe it. And that, that settles, settles it. it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord gives us boldness. For I am your God who takes hold of your right hand. And I say to you, do not fear. I will help you. God's, God reveals his identity to us through his word, the nature of God. And through that, we also know who we are in God through the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So whatever word that the Lord has given you, the word you have received, the rhema, the written word, the, the conclusion this morning is nothing can stop the word of God. The Bible says in the beginning, God said, let there be light. And what happened? Nothing. Your background, where I'm coming from, and you know, someone also said, I love all those quotes, said, because you are from a humble background, that doesn't mean you should put your back on the ground. <laughs> and be crying, ah, this, this, hallelujah. That you are in oh you doesn't stop your greatness. Praise the Lord. Someone was telling me during, okay, is it last week, that do you know that we have about four lecturers from, uh, we have four, four lecturers in Bafok that graduated from Harvard. And I said, uh, I said they, are not, they are not doing anything. And someone graduated from maybe of Apoli. <laughs> and they are doing great and mighty things. Praise the Lord. So the person was trying to encourage that, you know, I'm not saying you should not go to good schools. <laughs> Amen. But if you, you some, sometimes you don't have power over those things. Your parents don't have money and they say, okay, go to uh, LA Japamari school or something. Hallelujah. But if you have Christ and, you know, the word of the Lord has transformed your life, you can get to anywhere. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord. We are strengthened by the word. 
We receive zeal through the word. Can we have the keyboard? Let's be on our feet this morning. God says it. I believe it. And I say to thee. God said it. I believe it. God said to thee. Said it. God said it. I believe it. God said to thee. God said it. Amen. Acts 20 32. The Bible says, So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. I commend to you this morning the word of grace, the word of God, which is able to build you up. Nothing else can build you up, nothing else can give you that inheritance. Nothing else can give you that promise except the word of God. I commend you to the word of grace. Who is able, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all who are sanctified. The word of the Lord is what that can give you that inheritance. That thing you are trusting God for. Luke 5, the Bible says, God told Peter, Jesus told Peter, Peter said, I have toyed all night. And the Bible says, Jesus said, launch into the deep. And thank God, Peter said, said, at thy word, I will launch out. And what happened? That was a net-breaking miracle. You have been entertaining fear. God is telling you this morning, launch out through the word, through his word, through the written word, through the remnant that you have received. Oh, I want you to say after me this morning, I am what the word says I am. I am what the word says I am. I'm a child of the king. In the name of Jesus. I've got the life of God in me. I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer. The Bible says for whatsoever is born of God, I don't know where I was born. Maybe in Abel Kuta or Ibadan. Whatsoever is born of God, because it is written, I am an overcomer. I've got the life of God in me. Can you say after me? I've got the life of God in me. Oh, I'm a winner. In the name of Jesus. Great things are happening in my life. Oh, through the word of the Lord. Great things are happening in my life. Can you pray this morning? Great things are happening in my life. Because the word of the Lord is yes and amen. Great things, great and mighty things are happening in my life. Oh, rush kapara katoba rune marama na ba shakata. Eh, laga laga la ba rush ke perama rate katabada. Oh, nakasha kaperute baruna kata rush ke peraba. Hey, na kwa shaka pera mada bada bada mada bada 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 shaka bara madia. Ela garabo sheke pera mada. For in Jesus, a mighty name we pray. Oh, I am what the word of God says I am. In the name of Jesus, the glory of God is upon me. I walk in the light of God. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, it says, the light shineth in darkness, and darkness could not comprehend. What is that darkness in your life? By the reason of the word today. Oh, what is that darkness in your family? What is that darkness in your academics? What is that darkness in that project? Because of the word of the Lord. Because of the written word. Because of the spoken word, I decree light in the name of Jesus. The heart was without form and darkness was hovering up on the face of the deep. And Jesus spoke the word, and God spoke the word. said, let there be light. 
and light appeared. What is that darkness in your life? Oh, what is that limitation in your life? Because of the word of the Lord this morning, let there be light in the name of Jesus. Let there be light in the name of Jesus. I am what the word of the Lord says I am. I'm a new creature in the name of Jesus. All things are passed away in the name of Jesus. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me in the name of Jesus. Your economy should not be determined by the economy of Nigeria. Oh, because you have been made to sit with Christ in heavenly places. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places in the name of Jesus. Therefore, I cannot be stranded in the name of Jesus. Prosperity is mine in the name of Jesus. Oh, just give him praise this morning. Worship him for what he has done for you this morning. Father, we bless you this morning. You can effectively use the word of God if you are part of the kingdom. You can now be an outsider and you want to use the word of the king. You are here, you know you are not born again. Or you know that you are still struggling. The word of the Lord has come this morning. The Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You need that eternal life in your life this morning. Can I see your hand? You want to say, Lord, have mercy. You want to say, Lord, have mercy. I'm coming to you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my sister. You want to say, Lord, I'm yielding to your word this morning. You cannot effectively use the word of the Lord if you are not part of the kingdom. Oh, If you are raising that hand, let's see it. Let's see it. Father, we thank you. I surrender. If you have raised your hand, can you place your right hand on your chest and say, Father, I have come to you this morning. Cleanse me from all my sin. Forgive me all my sin. Lord, Accept me into your kingdom. I confess my sin. The Bible says, if we confess our sin, he is able and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Lord, I surrender all to you in the name of Jesus. If you have said that prayer, you are saved and the Lord has admitted you into his kingdom. Father, we thank you for the souls that you have brought out from darkness and you have you know, brought them in into the kingdom of your marvelous light. Lord, we pray that you will keep these ones in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless your holy name. Lord, we also pray that as we go this week, that all your promises concerning us, that we begin to see the manifestations in the name of Jesus. That Lord, this week we will walk in the light of your world. In the name of Jesus. We will walk in the light of your word this week. For the rest of this year, we will walk in the light of your word. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Clap your hands for Jesus this morning. Clap your hands for Jesus.